CataractCoach.com, a Toric EDOF IOL in Zyner loss. I get surprised by extensive Zyner loss. So here's the case, putting in viscoelastic, again, expecting a normal case here. So we'll make our main incision. Everything else looks pretty routine. And here's where I figure out there's an issue. We start to make the rexus and look at the anterior lens capsule. I poke in. Oh boy, is it wrinkly. The whole nucleus is moving. Now I know I'm in trouble. That's going to be a tough case. So what do you do? Well, let's get the rexus done. And I want to bring that nucleus out of the capsular bag. There's a five millimeter rexus. We got a good rexus here. Let's hide or dissect and hide or delineate. Let me get that central endonucleus out of the bag. If I can have the endonucleus removed while the epinucleus is still in the bag and holding things in place, I think that's going to help me. So there's the endonucleus out of the bag. I'm going to go in there, get the chopper around that endonucleus. There it is. Chop it, remove it, and I'm going to get surprised in just a moment. Now, the video is at two times normal speed, so you'll see that. But you see the epinuclear shell, which is a little bit of a protection for me. And then I'm going to notice in that top left corner, wow, we're going to get a clear red reflex. Look at that coming up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's Zyner absence. I want to get the nucleus out quickly before something else happens. What are the options here? What can we do? So that's it. Look at that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop. I know better than to continue. So stop right there. Big epinuclear shell still in the eye. What should we do? Now, do you pull out capsular hooks? Okay, there are no capsular hooks in the OR. Now what? Do you want to make do with iris hooks to hold that up? What are you going to do? Well, let's try go over to this side. Can I get some of this epinucleus out? Obviously, I know that one quadrant's tough. So let's put in some viscoelastic. Let's stabilize things here. But I'm going to first seal up that main incision. I don't want it to leak too much. There's more viscoelastic. You heard us say it before. Viscoelastic cheaper than vitreous, right? So let's try visco dissect away this epinuclear shell from all the quadrants. So I did like the technique of getting the endonucleus out while leaving the epinuclear shell to protect things. I thought that would help weigh things down. Now, what are we going to do here? Because we saw that there's probably at least three clock hours of very weak or actually absent zyner support here. So let's use this viscoelastic. I don't mind spending money. Spend the money. And let's get this big epinuclear shell up out of the bag and let's get it in a position where we can aspirate it down. So IA probe going inside the eye here. Try not to remove any of your viscoelastic. Try to keep that port occluded. If the port's not occluded, don't hit the vacuum. Stay in position one. And so we're going to get that big epinuclear shell up nice and easy. Take your time. Keep the tip occluded. And what are we going to do here? Are we going to be able to put in a toric EDOF lens, all right? EDOF, extended up to focus, this lens has to have that central um, light shaping element really well centered. So let's go ahead here. There's still a little bit of epinuclear shell, but let's put in the CTR. Capture tension ring going in here. Now you can put this in a variety of ways. We're going to angle it over here, see if we get that thing to spin around and go around. Okay, I'll take it. Okay, I feel a little bit better already. Is that trailing hook in the bag? No, let's get that in there. There it is. Whew, okay, still not out of the woods. Still not out of the woods yet. We still have to get the rest of this cleaned up and get the lens in. Now, we got to make an assessment. Can I place our single piece acrylic lens in the capsule bag? There's some cortex and some, some epinuclear shell that's left there. I'll get them putting more viscoelastic. Remember, the CTR is going to hold all that cortex that it traps right up against things. So we want to avoid that. So maybe I can do a bimanual approach here. So let's see, we made an extra incision there just to be sure. Here comes the lens, I'm going to put it in. We're going to take out the last bit of this cortex and epinuclear shell after I get the lens in the bag. I think having that extra lens in the bag, that weight's going to help keep the bag out of the way. Slow down your settings here. Lower the infusion and lower the flow rate. So half both of them. And let's take this last piece out, nice and easy. Do I dare try to go behind the eye well to remove viscoelastic? Uh, let's be very cautious here. I need to get that lens centered up a little more. There are the torque marks. That looks good. And I need not only the torque marks lined up, I need to have that central sha beam shaping element lined up with those central Purkinje images. So still a little bit of fluffy stuff there that needs to be aspirated out. We'll take care of that. There's still some viscoelastic in the eye. Let's seal things up here. We can always do some washout material, washout method using the paras. There are two paras now, right? 
So taking our time here, hydrate those up. Whew. This case took me 20 minutes. It's a long case for me. I want to show you all my cases, the ones that are slam dunks and look so beautiful and elegant and wow, how they do it. And the case like this where I worked hard and I struggled a little bit because the outcome here, look at that, is going to be great. Those Purkinje images lined up beautifully in the center of that extra focusing element on this EDOF lens. This is that Alcon Vivity. And the Toric IOL marks are also precisely done. Now look at the cornea. There's already some corneal edema here. This is a very involved surgery, and that's okay. The patient will heal up fine. Let's give it time. And nice stability of the lens. No pseudophagodinesis. No shaking of the lens. Let me show you the post-op pics. I'm pretty happy with the result. Post-op day one. As expected, some mild coronal edema. A nicely centered lens. I like that. The incisions are sealed up. The lens is at its correct orientation. And a weak one. Look at that. AC is quiet. Cornea is clear. Patient's seeing great. I'm so happy. I'm so relieved. And then also, here's that central focusing element. The EDOF central element is beautifully lined up in that central visual axis. I'm happy. Now, the bad news is the patient has a second eye next week. And I'm going to show you that video tomorrow.